It has become a tradition at our economic summits that at the end of the opening session, we always honor in the spirit of our mission statement, improving the state of the world, those people who engage on the ground, on the grassroots level, to really bring a better life to millions of people. So I might ask uh, Hilde Schwab to join us and to honor the social entrepreneurs of the year. The framework within which we have been working is not working. Poverty, unemployment, food crisis, oil crisis, everything. We need to build a new civilization where we won't have that. It's not money obsession, it's about human beings. Never ever have we been in such a need for social entrepreneurs to work in partnership with governments, NGOs, and civil society at large. Having access to the World Economic Forum for any social entrepreneur gives us a greater chance to scale our impact. We're able to connect with people from all over the world who are focused on the same issues. It's all about reaching more people and affecting change. We have enough technology, we have enough ability, enough innovative capacity to create the world that you feel comfortable with, you feel proud of creating that world. Your Majesties, Your Royal Highness, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it is with immense pleasure that I present to you the Social Entrepreneurs of the Year 2015, the awardees for the MENA region. My husband Klaus Schwab and I created the Schwab Foundation for Social Entrepreneurship over 15 years ago. Back then, no one knew what social entrepreneurship was. 15 years later, our foundation manages the largest global network of late-stage social entrepreneurs in the world. Over 300 organizations operating in 70 countries. And the term social entrepreneurship is much better understood and respected as businesses and governments alike are trying to embrace a creative spirit of disruptive innovation and develop business models that generate truly inclusive growth, the hallmarks of any social entrepreneur. For years, Jordan has led entrepreneurial efforts to solve social and environmental challenges, and the Schwab Foundation network includes more Jordanian social enterprises than from any other country in this region. Many of them are here with us this week. Injas, Tamilkam, Sakra Women's Society Cooperative, Questcoop, and others. And I encourage you to meet them during the summit. Other countries in the region are following Jordan's lead in creating entrepreneurial ecosystems for social entrepreneurs. And the Schwab Foundation is delighted to award winners from Lebanon and Palestine for the first time this year, as well as for the second time a winner from Morocco. I would now like to ask each awardee to join me on stage when I call their name. Maisun Odi, Nisa Broadcasting, Palestine. Nisa Broadcasting is using media as a tool to debate taboos, to challenge traditional gender roles, and present women as capable and assertive actors in society. Nisa, which means women in Arabic, has three radio frequencies and listeners across Palestine, and they have plans to expand to other MENA countries. The, its unique mix of Western and Arabic music and talk shows is intentionally designed to be attractive to both male and female listeners, because actively engaging men in the conversation about gender is central to Nisa's philosophy. Pierre Issa, Arc-en-Ciel, Lebanon. <laughs> 
Arc-en-Ciel runs 13 service centers throughout Lebanon, providing health care, disability aids, waste management services, jobs, and tourism. In 2014 alone, Arc-en-Ciel's 500 staff members provided services to 80,000 people. They even achieved that the revenue generated by its business units partially covers the costs of its other activities, which contributes to it, the organization's sustainability. Arc-en-Ciel works in the Syrian refugees camp in Lebanon and has recently expanded to serve disabled people inside Syria as well. Amina Slawi, AMH Group, Morocco. In the early 1990s, Amina Slawi suffered a tragic accident and has been in a wheelchair since. Luckily, she had the means to receive the necessary physiotherapy but realized that then the majority of Moroccans do not have this privilege. This inspired her to create the first ever rehabilitation center in Morocco. Today, the Noor Center for Re-Education in Casablanca provides services to 1,400 patients every year, including physiotherapy, speech therapy, and occupational therapy, and this at nearly 80% discount for low-income patients. AMG, the Association for People with Special Needs, complements the rehabilitation with social services and vocational training, and they have plans to open more centers throughout Morocco. This, con this concludes our honoring, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> My wife may have the last word. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, well, no I, I, would, I have the pleasure to ask uh, Your Majesties and the Crown Prince to join us on stage for a group photo. Yeah. Thank you very much for, for um, honoring these people. Thank you. Please remain seated for the group photo. <laughs>